Well, that was an exciting video, huh? Uh, the job of my video is to demonstrate a to a face in action. I'm not even going to assume you know into a face. We're going to review a little bit of the basics. But before I do that, it's probably best for me to at least touch on the news of this launch. So this launch is entirely about player next gen. That is the very creative name for the next generation of player. Player is the runtime. It's the Intuit face runtime. Its intent is to play the stuff you build in Composer. You build experiences in Intuit face Composer, you run them in Intuit face player. The point of player is to shield you from the nuances of your target platforms. Whether you want to deploy to a bright sign device or an Android device, uh, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to know what it means to run on those devices. You just build in Composer, not worry about it. That's player's problem. We've had a version of player for uh, 10 plus years. Uh, we can call that current gen player. And it was built using technologies that were native to each individual device on which the uh, software was running. With player next gen, we have switched to what we'll call modern web technologies which enables us to really not have to worry about the nuances of each individual platform. We can optimize performance, optimize scalability, squeeze every last drop of speed out of that platform using technology that is platform independent. It gives us enormous flexibility and gives you a lot of new options as well. This means that when you're using Intuiface to deploy to a BrightSign device, you're still using Player. Nothing has changed from the outside. Inside, it's a new technology. This applies to every existing in-venue platform that Intuiface has supported in the past, with the exception of Windows. So Windows has its own individual technology built using something called .NET. But for all other, all other in-venue deployment options, we will now start using under the covers this next generation technology. That's Android, BrightSign, iOS on the iPad, on the iPad Samsung Tizen, uh, Chrome OS and Raps, uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, we've been able to support all of these with this next-gen technology. It's just going to be called Player. It's going to look the same if you're an existing customer. It's going to act the same under the covers, much better performance and scalability. It allows us to be more uh, aggressive in how we handle those platforms. But think about it. If we're using modern web technologies, doesn't that mean that maybe we can run it on the web? And that's exactly right. One of the beauties of player next gen is it doesn't just help us do a better job on the existing platforms we support. It means we can go to the web. Every Intuiface experience you publish uh, in Composer, you build in Composer, can be deployed to the web. It has its own URL. You can put the URL in and there's the experience on a web page. You can embed it in an iframe so it's hosted by some other web page. You can even install it as a progressive web app. Progressive Web App, a PWA, that means under the covers, it's web technologies, but it kind of acts like a native application. If I'm on my mobile phone or if I'm on my tablet, there's an icon on the home screen. And if I tap that home screen icon, up opens the experience. You don't see a browser. It's not doesn't look like a browser experience, but under the covers, it is web technology. So the same thing that lets us deploy to the web, lets us deploy as a PWA. I'm going to show you all of this stuff in our demonstrations. So this next generation technology is available today and forever. You don't have to ask for it. It is the thing you get when you run player. So let's now transition to the demonstrations. As I said, I don't want to assume you know much about our platform. I'm going to start inside Composer. We're going to take a look at experience, make a couple of changes and go from there. I've opened up a project in Intuiface Composer. It's called My First Project. It's something we make available to anybody who performs a trial of Intuiface. This project is currently in Composer. You can see if you're new to Composer, this drop-down list shows me that there's a set of scenes in my experience, and whichever scene I select here, I have the ability to edit. I can open up the Scene Structure panel to tell me what is in this scene I'm actively editing. I can open up the Properties panel on the right so I can modify little nuanced characteristics of these elements, and so on and so on. There's tons of videos will help you go through the basics uh, and the not so basics. But what I want to do here is play it. I want to preview it. I want to see what's inside it. Uh, see the little triangle at the top of Composer that lets me uh, preview my work. We call it play mode. Inside Composer is player. 
we embed it inside Composer. So if you test your work, we're using the same technology you would use in a deployment environment. So let me click play mode and start up this experience. So here we have our experience, touch the screen to start. I'm using my PC with a mouse, so I'm using my mouse as a finger. We have, let's see, image gallery, item catalog, and quiz. Well, I'm gonna give you a chance to download this experience and try the image gallery and the quiz on your own. It's available to every single person on trial or an active customer, but let's open up the item catalog. The item catalog, it's a catalog of items. We're very creative and intuitive in the way we name things. So we have this item catalog with this array of items that we can browse. And you'll notice I do have a filter option here so I can click lighting and then only see the items that correspond with lighting. Each one of these things is a view details, view details button. If I click that, I get the details panel. Okay, let's modify this experience. Now what I specifically wanna do is add a new lighting item to this experience. So that when we open, when we run this experience, it's going to have five items instead of four for lighting. I know that this experience was built using the headless CMS. Uh, it's another Intuiface product used for content management in the cloud. I'm going to open up that headless CMS and add a new item, and you're going to come along with me and do it together. I've now opened Headless CMS in the web browser on my PC. Uh, Headless CMS, as I mentioned, it's a content management system. It allows people that never touch Composer, may never have even heard of Intuiface, gives those people, these content managers, the ability to define data structures and assign content to those data structures. If you remember back in that experience, that item catalog had names and images and prices, descriptions. None of that stuff was in Composer. It wasn't in that experience. It's here in the headless CMS. Uh, we call these things bases. So in headless CMS, you create bases. And what you see on screen right now is the base used by the My First Project project by that experience. And it has a couple of data structures used to store information. I'm going to jump over to the content tab and then look at what's called the items table. So this table is a list of all of the items that are in the experience, my first project. And it looks like it has, uh, I don't know, give it, it looks like 19 items. What I wanted to do, I told you this, I wanna add another item to the base and specifically a lighting item. Let's get my glasses on and we're going to add a new item to this base. I'm gonna put it in the lighting category we're going to call it a seated lamp. Uh, I'm going to describe it because I know this is true, a great conversation starter for parties. Uh, how much is it? It's uh, priceless, actually, but we will call it 250 whatevers. Uh, and now we need to add an image. So let me grab that image from my computer. Lamp. Great. So we are now uploaded, uploading the image to the base. I have added a new row to this table. There is a workflow in Headless CMS to uh, allow me to stage content, to formally publish it, make it available to an experience. Right now it's in draft form. It's not yet visible to the experience in Composer. I haven't published it yet, which is why in the bottom left, I'm gonna select publish. Yes, publish those changes. And now it is making it official. The master uh, uh, base that is located in the cloud now contains this new row that is accessible to the experience back in Composer. Let's go check that out. Here we are back in Composer. We've published those changes to the base that's stored in the cloud. We need to get those changes here. We wanna test it out, right? Well, here's what's, what's nice. Uh, player in Composer, but player, always makes sure it has the latest version of a base before it runs the experience. In fact, whenever an experience uses a headless CMS base, there's a copy of that base on the local device. It is stored locally on the device. That copy is synchronized with the master that's stored in the cloud. So when I push play in play mode, or when you run an experience in player that is independently installed in the field, the first thing that happens is it checks the experience. Are there any updates to the experience or to the base? 
and to make sure that all the proper information is downloaded to the local copy, one of the beauties of that is it maximizes performance. Your experience is not talking to the cloud to get all the items in the item catalog, it's talking to the local copy. So we just added a new row to the table for the item catalog. There should be a new lighting item. Let's test it out by starting play mode. We've run our experience. It has downloaded an updated version of the base, should have that extra row in it, which means we should see another item in the item catalog. Let's take a look. We're touching the screen, heading to item catalog, filtering by lighting, and oh my gosh, there's the seated lamp. And if I click view details, there's our description. Pretty simple, right? Now we haven't had any discussion about deployment yet, and we're gonna do that now because I think this experience is ready. Right now it's on my machine, it's in Composer, I've made my edits. I wanna get it up into the cloud. I wanna be able to deploy this experience to devices and or to the web. For those of you who use Composer, the first step is to publish inside Composer. I'm gonna publish it. If you don't know Composer, don't worry about it. It's a two-step process. Let's assume I published it, it's time to deploy. Now that we've published the experience in Composer, it shows up in what we call the Share and Deploy Console. This is part of the My Intuiface website. You go online, you log into your Intuiface account, you have access to the My Intuiface website, which lets you manage all aspects of your account, one of which is to manage all of the experiences you've published. Here are all the experiences published for, for the accounts I've been using for this demonstration. And you can see in the upper left, the very first uh, entry, is the experience you and I just modified. If I click that thumbnail, I get some additional details about this experience and among other things, it allows me to deploy it. Now, if you look, there's a couple of tabs here. There's deploy and venue, deploy as web page. Let's talk about deploy and venue first. Deploy and venue means running the experience on player, player installed on that device. Player is running independently on the device you can then remotely deploy experiences to that player. We call that an in-venue deployment. It's not in the cloud, it's not in a browser. Player is running natively on that device using modern web technologies. Well, thank you, Player Next Gen, but it's running natively on the device. It's running in-venue. You can then deploy to that device. You could take it offline at some point, certainly if the experience can operate offline, but the beauty of remote deployment is you don't need to be there. So. If we want to deploy in venue, we install player on a target device. And then using this tab here, we can select a set of devices. And there are ways to filter uh, the devices, pick the ones I want. Maybe it's one, maybe it's a thousand and one devices. Pick the devices I want to deploy to, and then I can schedule that deployment or do it right away. I have that option. Uh, there's other videos about that. Let's talk a little bit about the cool aspect of player next gen, which is the ability to deploy to the web which is this other tab just to the right, Deploys web page. This gets us to a quick licensing discussion. So let's do that right now. You'll notice you are asked for web deployment, do you wanna use player licensing? Or as you can see here, do you wanna use views licensing? Now, why would you have to make a licensing decision before you publish to the web? Well, here's why. It depends on how you want that deployed experience to be used. If you have an audience of unknown size, on a set of unknown devices, you want to use what we call views licensing, which is probably the type of licensing that's typical for any kind of web page creation software. You don't know which people, you don't know how many devices, you don't know how many views, so you buy a views license. And you can buy packages of a certain number of views, and uh, then you don't have to worry about who's opening. It could be anywhere in the world, as many people as, as I guess the more, the merrier, but that's what views licensing is for. It operates like a regular web page. If you lose a network connection, it's gonna lose its network connection. It's not gonna operate it. It is actively communicating with the web. But if you have a known audience of a finite size on known devices and or, but typically and, you want the ability to go offline, you would use player licensing. For existing customers, you know player licensing. That's how we've always licensed player. When you do in-venue player deployments, each individual player is licensed. Well, that same exact license can be used for web deployments. 
each instance of that experience opened in a browser on a device will consume a player license. Why would we allow that? What's the point? Well, because that allows us to run it as a progressive web application, which we talked about before. Progressive web applications can be installed and run locally on, devi on the device. They look native, they act native, but under the covers, it's essentially a web browser wrapped around a web page where you'd never know. If it's a known number of devices for a known audience, you don't want a limited people with player licenses. But if it's known, finite, then this is the right way to go. For this demonstration, I'm going to do player licensing. It allows me to run it in a browser and then to install it as a local PWA. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, let's uh, deploy this experience to the web using player licensing. It will run in a browser and we'll be able to pop out a copy that can run independently. You'll get that shortcut on your desktop, on your home screen, that sort of thing. So player licensing, we scroll down, create URL. Let's create a URL, great idea. Well, guess what? The URL already exists, it's already done. We can configure this a bit more if we want. Uh, you can see the notes field at the top, which is for notes. A little reminder, we're using player licensing. It asks about a license retention duration. So this is all about the ability to run offline. You can set how long you want it to be able to run offline. The default is 20 minutes. The, the max is, I don't even know, what is the max? Let's see, 30 days. It can run offline for 30 days. It will consume that license and hold on to it for dear life for that period of time. Once the retention duration expires, if that experience is closed on the web, then that license will be released. If it's actively being used, then it will keep retaining the license anyway. This is sort of when it's no longer being actively used. I'm fine with a 20 minute license retention duration. You can see then I can customize aspects of the URL itself. Uh, in particular, the slug. This is one awful automatic slug. So the slug is the end of the URL and we generate something based on the name of the project and some random characters to make sure nobody else has the same uh, URL. Uh, let's try this. You know what, maybe I can get away with just doing that. That might be fine. Yeah, I think that's fine. So that's my new slug. I could have called it Jeff, by the way. Not a very good URL, but I could have called it Jeff. So the slug could have been anything I want, but that's fine. Favicon is fine, page title, why not? Uh, do I want it to be used in an iframe? I can give it that permission. For this demonstration, not important, but I do want to permit installation. Do you see that? I want to allow it to be popped out of the browser and run independent of a browser. I've given it that permission and I can specify an icon or an app name. They appear up, you know, in the, the uh, title bar at the top. So let me save that. The URL already exists. It's already live. You can see it on the bottom of my screen here. There's the URL. I think we need to uh, check it out. So I'm going to copy that URL right there, go up to my browser, open up a new tab, and let's paste and go to this experience that is now published to the web. And lo and behold, it's running in my browser. It's the exact same thing we saw in Composer, but it's running in my browser tab. And just like in Composer, when it loaded, not only did it download the experience and a local copy of the base, but it will always, every time we load this URL, make sure it has the latest version of the experience and the latest version of the base. Let's see if that extra row is in the item catalog, shall we? So I'm touching the screen. Again, if this is a touch screen, I'm using my finger. We go to the item catalog. Lighting. And there is my seated lamp. Isn't that nice? So here we have an experience running in a browser. I could be anywhere in the world. Now remember, I did use player licensing. We've consumed a player license. You don't do that for high scalability deployments for that you want views licensing. But here, this is fine. I'm happy with it. Let's now create that independent copy. Let's pop out that instance of the experience that is specific to progressive web apps. So installation as an independent progressive web application running outside a browser, it's actually not that hard. It's pretty easy. It is going to vary from browser to browser in subtle ways. Right now I'm using the Chrome browser and in Chrome browsers, if there's a website that can be installed as a PWA as a progressive web app, it's got that icon in the upper right hand corner. Do you see where my mouse is? 
that icon allows me to install this experience as a local app. So let me click that. It says, should I install it? And we say, yes, we're going to install it. And what it's doing now is creating that independent version of the experience, which you can see here on my screen. So this is now the same experience that we've been using this whole time, but it's running outside of the browser. Now this is fine, but check it out. If I go to my desktop, see this icon here? If I double click that icon, it does not launch Chrome. It just launches that box that we saw, which has the experience inside of it. It's an independent application. Under the covers, it's the same technology we've been using before, but it looks and acts as if it were native. It has its own copy of the headless CMS base. Every time you run it, that's going to make sure it is the latest version of the experience, the latest version of the base. I can do this on my mobile phone. I can do this on my tablet. Everywhere we support the use of web deployment, uh, Windows, Android, Chrome, Linux, Mac OS, you can install this independent progressive web application and let your end user, maybe it's your sales rep, somebody in, in, in the workplace, run this application on their device. Let me just wrap up this demo with a couple of technical points. The first is whenever IntuiFace uh, experiences are published to the cloud for the purposes of web deployment, under the covers we're using Amazon CloudFront. That's their content delivery network. What that means is no matter where you are on the planet, there's always going to be a copy of that experience stored very close to you geographically, maximizing download speeds. I also want to mention that IntuiFace is ISO 27001 certified. That's the information security standard. What it basically means is that your intellectual property is safe with us. It's beautiful because we'll get these multi-page RFPs from IT organizations. We tell them we're ISO certified and they're happy. We don't have to fill out the forms. So I don't know about you. I'm pretty exhausted. We did a lot. It's, uh, it's exhausting. No, it's not exhausting. Do you see what we did in about 10 or 15 minutes? Intuiface is a no-code platform. Did you notice that everything we did didn't require any technical know-how? Uh, we created an experience, modified a headless CMS base, redeployed it, uh, put it on the web, created a PWA. We did all of that in minutes. I'm not even sweating and nobody had to write a line of code. I didn't even talk about analytics, which is a whole other topic where you can collect information about the experiences you're deploying, learn what people are doing, identify what works, what doesn't work measure dwell time, levels of engagement. You can do all of this with Tuaface and you don't have to be some sort of technical expert. It, it really is amazing. Remember, Player Next Gen is available now. If you're a paid customer, whenever you use Player, if you download Player starting now and you're using it on any platform other than Windows, you're using Player Next Gen technology. We're calling it Player, but it's Player Next Gen Tech. If you're a trial customer, just click Get free, Start Free Trial. Uh, you have 28 days to use 100% of our product. You have access to Player Next Gen. You can deploy stuff to the web. And here, here's what I think you should do. If you're new to the product, start the trial, build a cool experience, deploy it to the web, show it to your boss, tell her how amazing the product is, how easy it is, and that you need to buy lots and lots of licenses. Thanks for watching.